So my name is Presti and I'm an engineering geology student at ETH and my presentation will be on the reliability and the vulnerability of autonomous cars in modern society. So let's just start by defining what autonomous vehicles are. Um, autonomous cars employ a combination of high-tech sensors and innovative algorithms to detect and respond to their surroundings, including radar, light detection and ranging, and GPS. So at its core, a self-driving car is basically just a blend of networking components, uh, some existing within the car and some existing outside the car. These complex systems give the self-driving cars the data and the intellect it needs to make autonomous decisions. So there are different levels of autonomous cars defined by the Society of Automotive Engineers. And in the formal SAE definition on the diagram, one of the most important shift we see is from level two to level three, level two being the human driver no longer has to monitor the environment, but at level three, the car can drive itself, but the human still has the responsibility to intervene when asked to do so by the automated system. And as we get into the higher levels like four and five, uh, the human no longer has the responsibility to interact and do anything. The car pretty much does everything for, for him or her. And now let's look at some of, some of the benefits for autonomous cars. Uh, we all know one of the most frustrating aspects of driving is traffic. And we've all been there. One of the worst traffic I've personally experienced was in California. The cars barely move at, during peak hours and it's absolutely terrible. Although not as bad, it's the same case in places like Zurich as well. So one of the researchers at University of Cambridge did an experiment where they programmed a small fleet of robotic cars to drive on multi-lane tracks. And they studied how the traffic flow changed when one of the cars stopped. And the study found that self-driving cars working together can speed up the traffic by a whole 35%. Not only that, but self-driving cars will be beneficial for traveling in general, whether for people with disabilities or just anyone who's afraid of driving. Uh, in one of the research papers uh, I read regarding the German ethics code of automated cars, it stated that it is this estimated that driverless cars in the future could reduce fatalities uh, up to 90%, which by itself sounds very attractive and possibly one of the best arguments in my opinion. But in general, autonomous cars will reduce the overall driving stress and enable people to move from one location to another with a peace of mind. environmental benefits. Um, many favorable ethical arguments for the introduction of autonomous cars have been made on environmental grounds to begin with, uh, which basically states that autonomous cars could reduce fuel usage and pollution by strictly following hypermilling strategies, uh, which is just a fancy word for it provides the possibility for cars to position themselves closely behind each other. And since self-driving cars can react faster than humans, it will reduce the amount of pollution and will also have a much higher safety margin uh, compared to humans driving the car themselves. Uh, now let's look at the stakeholders. So here uh, we look at people who are involved and who are affected. Um, as with any product, we have the consumers who are the customers, uh, manufacturers and the government involved. Each of these parties play a different role in the market. For example, we as consumers, when we buy a car to navigate through the roads, we balance values such as safety, legality, and mobility. And the same applies when we look at buying autonomous cars as well. So the benefit for us as consumers in buying autonomous car would be the ease of mobility, but at, at the same time, the challenges we face would be that we want assurances that our safety is our top priority and that our data is protected. As for manufacturers, although their motivation is strictly based on profit, they would want their customers to be happy by providing them with attractive, efficient and safe products. Uh, but a challenge for them would be that they have to abide by the regulations that are gonna be set in place for AVs. And one of the major ones would be dealing with the liability issues that arises when it comes to AV, because one might argue that when a driver is no longer in control of the car, the liability would lie with the manufacturer themselves. And lastly, the government, as for the government, they benefit greatly with the better automated system and improved lifestyle 
for the citizens, which, which comes from fewer accidents and much less economic toll caused by property, property damages, injuries, and fatalities. But at the same time, as we know, when it comes to technology, there, is, uh, there are uh, data protection and security issues. So one of the biggest challenges for the government would be to provide and enforce safety regulations related to AVs to mitigate these problems as best as possible. Now for the socioeconomic impacts, uh, with any technology, uh, we know that it could have positive and negative impacts on the socioeconomic aspects. So one of the biggest we have touched on in previous talks in this class being cybersecurity. Moving to more, towards a more autonomous transport would mean that uh, it would be more vulnerable to hacks that could lead to harm to the public. So it's very important to avoid making this shift until the companies can assure like a more secure system. Uh, along with cybersecurity, introduction of AVs in the modern society will also affect people's jobs. For example, uh, let's say a log logistics company or a public transportation company could benefit financially by buying autonomous trucks and buses, which would do their jobs uh, more safely and more efficiently compared to human beings. And this would obviously mean that people would lose their jobs and cities would need to implement more regulations and build efficient uh, infrastructures to make this work. And obviously with more AVs around, it would also raise liability questions and affect insurances as well. All right, so we've also talked about this scenario in the class before, but I would also like to mention it again because it's very important when it comes to AVs. In a study conducted in 2016, uh, they compare the social dilemma of autonomous vehicles and they discuss the moral issues with them. So let me ask you this. Uh, let's just ask ourselves here, what's more moral here in the, in the diagram? Is it A, where if the car was given a choice to kill several pedestrians or one person who's walking on the side of the street or option B, where it should kill the pedestrian or kill the passenger to save the pedestrian or option C, the choice between killing several pedestrians or its own passenger I mean, obviously making this, is, this, this decision is tough and in every scenario, someone has to die. And yes, we know that AVs reduce traffic accidents, but at the same time, they will have to choose between two evils, such as sacrificing their own passenger or just running over another pedestrian. So defining the algorithms that will help AVs make such moral decisions is gonna be a formidable challenge in the future, or even now, I guess. Um, as for the last slide, I just want to show you ethic, ethical codes that were released by Germany. Um, and this was released by the German National Ethics Committee and presented uh, in June 2017. It consists of 20 ethical guidelines in total, but these guidelines can be subdiv subdivided into these following categories. Uh, the report mainly emphasizes putting people safety first. Um, at all cost, and they, they mentioned that the primary focus of such, such technology should be to avoid accidents. And in the case of a dilemma mentioned in the previous slide, the decision to deliberately sacrifice certain lives should not be taken by a programmer. Um, and yeah, pretty, yeah. And the report also mentions the shift of accountability. Like as of now, if there is ever an accident uh, with a regular car, the driver who's driver who was driving the car is usually held accountable, but with a self-driving car, since the driver is no longer uh, in control of the car, the accountability, the accountability lies with the manufacturer of the system. So questions like who is to be held accountable in case, of a, in case of a crash, which car is to be licensed, these questions require a legal foundation in, in order to make cost and benefit calculations for the manufacturers. The rest of the report basically just talks about cybersecurity and the need for open communication between consumers and designers um, and uh, educating people on how the system works and stuff like that. But I just want to conclude by saying that we can say that without a doubt, uh, autonomous cars come with great improvements when it comes to efficiency, road safety, and comfort. But regardless, it is a great, it's going to be a great challenge for po politicians to enforce safety standards and producers to integrate such standards into fully automated cars for a modern society. And although we have self-driving cars in 2020, in order to achieve full automation, 
which requires absolutely no human interaction at all, we would have to make it as moral as technically possible before we introduce it into society. Uh, and that's all the references and that's all I have. Thank you for listening.